Hello guys and girls and welcome back to another Thorncraft 4.2 tutorial. So in the last uh, thing that we did, we covered one cores, one caps and all that stuff. And today I want to show you the more powerful uses for your wand instead of just shoving the marking work table to craft uh, other things. Uh, so you can add these things called... Uh, at, called focus onto it or foci, uh, the plural term for them. Uh, there are, what is it, five, six, seven, eight different ones in vanilla Minecraft. Nine, uh, but one of them isn't crap. Actually, sorry, there's ten. One of them comes under the Eldritch tab, which we'll cover when we get to the Eldritch tab. And then another one of them is not craftable. Uh, it's only available from PEX. So if we've got time at the end of this episode, I will cover over how to grab that one. Uh, so let's start off straight in the Thormonomicon. So the very first one you're probably going to look at will be your wand. Uh, this one foci here, this tells you everything about foci and stuff like that. Oh, it's raining. What horrible that Right, turn rain off. Right. So this tells you all about foci and stuff like that. Um, and then a little page break here it will tell you uh, the very first one that you've discovered. The very first one you're going to discover is the one focus of fire. It's going to use 0.1 ignis per tick. So if you use this for a long duration, you will drain your wand of ignis. Uh, but as you see here, it's fairly simple to craft. You need to craft all of these in an arcane workbench. Uh, the diamond chest ones are infusion and stuff, so they are fairly simple. It's basically going to take, let's just take the goggles off so you can see the true cost of these. Um, so it's going to take, all of them take court and all of them take shards around the outside. So that one's fire, air, water, earth, and then balance shards on there. Um, and then they all take courts in between them. So shards in the corner, courts in there. And they all have a little different item in between. Um, this one's got a fire charge. This one is a potato. That's a shock charge. Uh, the ice one has a diamond. The earth one has an emerald in it. Can't even remember what these are called. Excavation. And then the equal trade one has a quicksilver in the middle of it. Just one piece of thorncraft. Quicksilver. Right, so let's quickly go through these. Um, fire one is obviously going to do yourself some fire damage. It's going to take 10 Petitio and 20 Ignis to make. So let's quickly grab that one. Actually, I've got all of them in a little pouch thing here, which I'll show you how to make in a second as well. I just want to cover all of these. Uh, then you've got your shock one, which is going to do shock damage. It's going to take 10 air, 10 Petitio, 10 auto to make that one. And it's 0 0.25 uh, per cast on that one. So this one here, you kind of hold it down and then this drains it per tick. This one has a single cast. It will zap them with lightning. Uh, you can upgrade all these later on, which I'll cover in a bit as well. Uh, but yeah, you pretty much just zap them with lightning. And every time you zap, it will drain 0.25 air out of your wand. So you do get a fair bit of use out of it. This is why you kind of want to hit the higher tier ones uh, early, as early on as you possibly can. Um, you can also craft scepters, which I'm yet to go into. I'll do another video on that soon. Um... But then we've got the frost one as well. This is per cast as well. This isn't a holy one. This is just one that you cast. It'll, it doesn't cost that much. It like spreads the cost out between them. So it's using about 0 0.1 vis altogether. It's just spread between Acne, Aqua, Ignis, and Petitio. Really, really cool one there. Uh, we've got an excavation one. Oh, sorry, that one takes 10 Petitio, 10 Ordo, and 10 Aqua. Uh, this one here takes 20 Terra, 5 Petitio, and 5 Ordo. And this is another per tick one. So this is one that you hold and it will drain it per tick at 0 0.15. Not too bad. Again, you do get a fair bit of use out of it. Um, and then finally, we've got the equal trade one. This one's a really, really cool one. Um, it takes 10 Terra, 15 Petitio, and 15 Auto to get this one. Uh, these are all the base cost, by the way. They, you can get discount. Like if I was to put a silverwood one in there, it would be a lot cheaper. And to wear the full uh, Thaumaturge set. Um, but these are all the base costs. Uh, so this one is per cast and it's zero point, It's roughly using about 0 0.15 this spread out between Ordo, Pedicio and Terra. Quite evenly as well, so that's quite a good one. And this one's a really, really cool one to play with. So let's have a quick play with all of these and test them all out. Uh, over here I've got three very willing um, tributes here. All volunteered, very brave soldiers here. Um, so we're going to go through every single one of these. So we're going to start off with the fire one. There's only three of these that do attack, which is these three here. And then these two are sort of building ones, which we'll cover in a second as well. 
Right, so Ignis one. As you can see, it does a little bit of damage. Does about a heart every like tick or so like that. Oh, just set the other one on fire. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but it takes a little bit of a while to kill them. Not too bad at all. And how much stuff did we use? Uh, we used about 0.7. I uh, know we used about 7 Ignis on that one. So that's not too bad. I have no idea how I'm recharging this wand. Uh, but we somehow are. Magic. Magic, magic, magic. I have no idea what's charging that wand. <laughs> They normally don't do that. It might be because I'm in creative. Uh, so the second one we're going to cover is Shock. That was the second one on the list there. Uh, this one's the one with the potato, air shards, and quartz. I'll quickly go over these as I show you these as well. So this one is per cast, as you can see there. Does a fair bit of damage. I think it does like two hearts. It only took like four zaps to kill him. He was a little bit hurt by fire. Uh, we seem fully charged on that. So that one's quite a good one. It's quite powerful, uh, even in the beginning stages. Uh, this is your most basic one, uh, so don't expect it to be amazing. This one here is pretty decent. Uh, this one here I'm using at the minute is pretty decent. No complaints on that one at all. Uh, like I said, you can upgrade all of these, which I'll cover in just a second as well. Uh, next one we have is the Frost one. Again, this is the one with the water shards and the diamond in the middle with the quartz and what so and whatnot. And this one is at full health, so let's give him a go. Does about a heart and a worth of damage per hit, roughly. Between one to two hearts of damage. And how much did we use then? It's still saying we're at 100%, so I'm guessing it's not using anything because we're in creative. Uh, but so they're the three attack ones. There's another attack one here, which is in the infusion altar. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty cool. They can be upgraded, make them more powerful and stuff like that. I'm going to have to do a whole thing on them. Uh, it's basically using this thing here. So let's quickly cover uh, the... Uh, sorry, let's cover the excavation focus and the equal trade focus. So these ones are really, really, really cool. Uh, excavation one is very, very good for building. Gives you a lot more reach than you think you'd have. So as you can see there, like I can't click on that block at all, yet I can still break it from here. So that seems to be the limit. So let's say about there. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you got eleven block limit on this. It's pretty good. Break through pretty much most stuff. As you see there, or break through the stone. Didn't want to do that, but we broke it anyway. Um, break through pretty much anything. So it's a pretty universal tool. It'll break through the log as well. Not as fast as the stone. But look, you see that? As we're breaking it, it's keeping how much it's broken. So if we were to keep going on it, it will still stay broken. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to affect that. I don't know if that fades after time, but it seems like it will build up and kind of just stay there. But say like you want to clear trees, this is quite handy for clearing trees and stuff because the leaves are really high up. So that's quite a nifty little one. Uh, I think you can make it more powerful or do wider areas effect. I'm not too sure. I haven't played around with the uh, manipulator too much with this so far. Uh, but the next favorite one of mine is the equal trade one. Let's just quickly find that in here. This one here, this one is absolutely awesome. So this one here will pretty much swap out any block. You can select the target block. So we're going to select uh, this one here, arcane stone block. And we're going to replace all of this horrible looking stone around us. And so what we have to do is you shift and right click on the block that you want. So we can shift. If you see up in the one slot there, you can see the block we've selected. It will change between grass and arcane stone. And to use it, you literally just come up to the block you want to change, and it will change all of the block of the same type. So because we're in creative, we're going to get a l much larger range on this. Let's just go into um, survival so you can see. Uh, but if you go like that. Oh, I only had one on me. Whoops. All right, let's try this again. I only had one on me. <laughs> That's why I only did the one. Um, there we go. Uh, but right, so you can see this here. Let's just try it on here. There you go. As you can see, even in survival, it does quite a big chunk. It looks like a four by four kind of area by the looks of it. We've done three by five by four. So it looks like all, all together, it does. Hang on, let's count this up. 15, 30. It looks like it does 60 blocks by the looks of it. No? 
Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, fifteen, thirty, forty-five, sixty. So yeah, it's done sixty blocks all together. So that's unless. So just have a look. No, it didn't do the ones inside, so it just did the ones around the outside on that one. Uh, but still pretty cool. It did 15 there, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 9, 9, 9. I don't know. It did quite a fair bit anyway. Um, not too bad at all. And then if we did it in creative, it would just do like all of it. It's crazy. Watch. It goes even further, I swear. But yeah, and then that's really, really cool. So if you like place blocks on something and you're like, I'm not sure if I like that or not, you can literally just go, oh, let's try it. Let's swap it out and see what it looks like and be like, oh, I don't like that. I'll swap it back. You can do that. It's so easy. Look at it. I love this one. This is probably one of my favorite ones ever. I'm going to change everything now because we can. I love playing with this one. Look at it. It's just so fun. I'm going to change the rest of this as well. Ta-da! Done. Look at look at it. It looks all fancy now, and that is so minimalistic. All we have to have is the blocks in our inventory. Um, so that is pretty much all the basic ones that you do in the crafting tables and stuff like that. Obviously, you need this and your wand and stuff, but they're not too hard to craft. So this is that is these five here. So you're starting to accumulate a bit of a collection. So I want to cover this bit now, um, and this is a focus pouch. This is what I'm using here. And it pretty much just keeps all my focuses in there. Nice and neat. I can put up to 18 in there, I do believe. And these are very, very simple to make. So you're going to need 10 auto, 10 patio, 10 terra in your wand. And you just need leather in a U shape like that with a mundane belt and a piece of gold on top. Mundane belt, very, very simple again. Three pieces of like that with a gold ingot. So that can't get any easier. And then all your focuses stay in here. You can access them onto your wand from here as well. And they'll just stay in the pouch and you can access them uh, through the equip wheel. Uh, to get the equip wheel up, by the way, the standard key binding is F. Just hold it down, uh, hover over the one that you want. So you can see there, hover over and then let go of the F button. It'll swap it out to that. Really, really cool stuff. If you want to take the thing off completely and you don't want to have any focuses on your wand, it's Shift and F, and there you go. You see they're all back in the bag now. Cool. So let's quickly move on with this. I don't want to take too much of your beautiful people's times, uh, but let's have a look at this one. This is another one of my favorites. This is the portable hole. Where is it? One focus portable hole. So this thing is done on an infusion altar with an ender pearl in the middle, quartz opposite air shard, Quartz opposite entropy and quartz opposite nerf shard as well. You're also going to need 10 alienist, 25 Ita, 25 Petitio, and 10 permutatio. And these all have to be in Essentia jars all around the altar. Uh, we haven't covered infusion yet, but there's plenty of tutorials out there. Um, I will get to it eventually. Uh, it's not too far off. We've still got to go through alchemy before we get on to uh, infusion stuff. Uh, but it is pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. Um, I will have a tutorial out for it very, very soon um, explaining how to do all the infusion stuff. But if you know how to do it, then this is how you make the black hole one. Um, it's really, really cool. I'll show you how that works in a minute. So we've also got this one here, and it's, this is the one focus of the nine hells. And this one has magma cream in the middle with fire shard opposite quartz, air opposite, and entry opposite. You're going to need 15 air, 15 beaster. 25 Ignis and 25 Pedicio, and that's all in the infusion table again, made pretty simply. This one's a little bit more difficult, but it's definitely worth it. This is the warding one. And basically, this is going to take another start. It's going to take orders opposite each other, quartz, uh, earth shard opposite each other, quartz opposite each other, and quicksilver opposite each other. Also going to need 10 Cognito, 25 Ordo, 25 Terra, and 25 Tutamon in Essentia Jars around your altar. So these things are really, really powerful, as you can imagine, with the whole Nether Star and Infusion dealio job things there. So we're going to quickly cover over these and show you exactly what they do. So we're going to need ourselves another volunteer. Thank you very much for volunteering. Um, so let's quickly start with the Black Hole one. This is one of my favorites. This will use uh, 0.1 air, 0.1 Petitio per cast, and this is a casting thing. It's got quite a good range on this, and I love it because you can just do this, and you can go through walls. So you can see a big wall there. Instead of walking around it, we just went through it. It stays up there for a little bit. 
not a huge amount of time, maybe about 10, 15 seconds, enough time for you to pass through. This is really handy if you've got like whole walls in your base. If you want to hide something, you can put it behind a wall. You know where to go. You can put a black hole through it and then go grab all your good stuff and things and be on your journey. So that's really, really cool. It also helps with like cabling if you're doing any of that or just generally getting around and trying to get out of tight jams. Uh, so the very next one is the Nine Hells one. This is where our wonderful assistant here comes in. This is going to use one air, two Ignis, one Petitio per cast. This one is a lot more expensive, but it is so cool. If you have a look at that, we have a little Hellbat fly out there. And you can actually get in there. There you go. You see they'll fly towards him, they'll attack him, they'll blow up, and they'll kill him. So that only took three bats. It was a little bit more expensive, but we kicked its ass. I uh, really do love that one. Once you upgrade it as well, there's a little section here. You can upgrade them. You can have vampire bats that will heal themselves, attack the enemy, and they'll also heal you as well. So there's like really, really cool things you can do with this. I'm pretty sure there'll be some things added into that later on as well. All right, so the very last one we're going to cover today, and we're going to be super quick on this. So I don't take up any more of your time. And this is the one focus of warding. So we're just going to go into game mode zero here. And I'm going to show you how this works. So as you can see here, we're going to ward up a lot of this. Uh, we're going to grab ourselves a pickaxe. Let's see if we can find one. Um, there you go, platinum pickaxe. Right, so as you can see here, cannot break this stuff. Still break this stuff down here with ease. See, broke it, and then we can place it back. Uh, but the things that we warded cannot be broken with a pickaxe. We get this really cool runic effect every time we try. Uh, but no, no matter how long we stand here for, we are never going to break through it. The only person who can break it is the person who cast it, I believe. So we can, we are the only people who can uncast it like that and unward it. Ward everything up like that. It all joins in together. And then if you have this on your base, nobody can ever get into your base. They'll be like, no, why not? Why? And the only way for it to be broken is to be unwarded like so. Really, really cool uh, focus. Really, it's just like, oh, I just absolutely love it. I just love being able to ward everything. You can have like creeper proof stuff. Creepers won't be blown at your base as much. Literally ward pretty much anything, I'm sure. Let's actually have a look. No, can't ward that. So there's some things you can ward. Some things you can't. It's mainly like full blocks. Right, so the very last thing I want to quickly cover. We're not going to go too much into depth. I will cover this in not the next video, the video after. Because this is going to require this relays. And we haven't touched on them yet. Next episode will be stabilizers and um, <clears throat> stuff like that. Harnessing this. And then we'll move on to this relays and focal manipulation. All in one episode. Uh, but this is a really cool thing. It basically uses XP and it will use uh, this from a node to uh, modify your things for you. If you can, sh I'll see if we can quickly show you. Put the most basic fire one in there. And you can see here we got we can pick between frugal, we'll reduce the um, cost of the cost of performing the, um, the spell by 10% per level. Have up to five levels on these, or you can make it even more powerful. Increases damage roughly about 20% per level. So if you click on that, it'll tell you exactly how much XP you need, how much this you need, and you hit start. It'll drain this through uh, this relays, and it'll take XP off of you and start infusing that. And then uh, you unlock more things as you progress through them. Um, but that is going to be it for this episode. Um, hopefully, it's not too long, and I covered everything with. Uh, that detail like enough detail that <clears throat> you guys can understand it uh, but not too much that you guys have fallen asleep and if you've fallen asleep then wake the goddamn hell up um, but thank you guys very, very much for watching I hope you guys have found some good use out of this uh, let me know down below if I've missed anything or if you have any questions regarding anything in Thorncraft, not just focuses, just anything in general uh, about Thorncraft, I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, but thank you guys very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a very fantastic day. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Twitter is in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next uh, video. Goodbye.